What is a reprobate? Well, most of us, even if we don't know what the actual definition of it is, most of us, if not all of us, as a matter of fact, all of us, we can point to an example. We've seen a reprobate person. We've seen a person whose mind is so depraved, and that's really what the word means, who they just exhibit. We don't have to know the exact definition without it. before we see it. We just know it. And then, oh, that's what that person is. And so let's go to where we find this word at and where it's spoken of in Romans chapter one. Let's go to verse 28. He says, and even as they did not like to retain the uh, God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now, this word typically shows up or really only shows up in the, the King James Version, if I'm correct. Uh, but what does the word mean? It comes from the Greek word adakimos, which is to be un unqualified, to be depraved, to be worthless, to be rejected. And so in this case, God has basically passed over them. They are so depraved. They are so really unworthy. And truth be told, all of us are unworthy. There's no one who is necessarily worthy in and of themselves. However, it is God who calls us to be worthy, who makes us so. It's him who first does so. But these are people now getting into the nuance of it as to why would he leave someone? Because could God change a person's mind? Could God take someone who seems to be so unworthy, who seems to be so depraved? Could he change them? Well, sure. As a matter of fact, he's done that a lot. As a matter of fact, he's always done that. So what's the difference between the people who he leaves in that state and those whom he doesn't? Well, we don't know. We can't get into God's mind and figure out why are these people left as reprobate, whereas others are not. There are some people who were worse off or just as bad as some of the people, the most outlandish examples that we've seen, and then now they are serving the Lord. How could that be? Well, that's a God thing, but just dealing with the word in and of itself, the word just seems to the word just means someone who is unapproved, who's worthless, who is just left in their depraved state. Oftentimes when you see these people, they will tell you, they can even tell you what the Bible says. They can they are uh, educated in some cases. They have all these different philosophies, whether they are studied philosophies or their own little, maybe their own street philo uh, philosophical views. Paul says in Titus 1 16, says they profess to know God, but by their deeds, they deny him being detestable and disobedient. Here's this word and worthless for any good deed. That word right there is a document, or in this case, a document. This is the, the same word that's used in Romans 1. They know, as a matter of fact, Paul brings it out in Romans 1. They know the things of God. They may even know the ordinance of God, but they deny him. And so these are people who just intentionally reject God. And that think that's that's the main point. They intentionally reject God. They know the truth. I don't care. Uh, matter of fact, you might see them curse God. They may shake their fist at God. They have a internal, intentional disdain for God. And so the question is, could a Christian ever be reprobate? Could he become uh, depraved like that? No, because the Bible is clear about us that he says to us. Paul says this in 2 Timothy, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. Chapter 5, verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so for us, we can't, we cannot have a depraved or reprobate mind. Uh, we don't, Christians aren't those that shake their fist at God. And if you find someone that does so, then that person clearly was never a Christian to begin with. There are a lot of reprobates who will say that, yeah, I used to be a Christian. Well, no, you weren't because this is an intentional um, depravity. Uh, this is you having nothing to do, having a hatred really for God. Why doesn't God change them? Don't know. That is a question for God. It's up to him, not to us. But as long as we identify that, uh, we're fine. And here's the thing. It, we can't change them. If a person is truly depraved, if a person is truly reprobate, there's nothing that we can really do about that. Uh, we can do our best to give the gospel. Now, the problem is we don't always know who is someone that might look depraved, someone that might look like they're a reprobate. What should we do? We should still give them the gospel because we don't know if that person ultimately is. That person might do what we did, come to Christ, because many of us look just like many of them. But thanks be to God, for his goodness, for his grace, for his sovereignty, and giving us to his son, and then giving us an inheritance in him. Amen.